Welcome to Addicted to Watches. Today, we will be looking at a watch we unboxed on the channel a little while ago. It's a budget orient watch that takes a lot of inspiration from a much more expensive watch, and one that I think does it well without being a straight copy. It was also a bargain I found in a second hand shop here in Japan. This is the Orient SER 2B001B0, better known as the Orient Chicane. If you've been watching my channel, you'll know that this is not the first Orient watch I have reviewed that pays homage to a Rolex watch. In an earlier video, we looked at my Orient Oyster, which takes its cues from the day date. This watch draws inspiration from a different watch in the Rolex catalogue. This of course, looks a lot like an Explorer. I don't think that is a bad thing though. For many, that watch represents the perfect one watch collection that can suit any occasion and I think this Orient is just as versatile. Also just like my Orient Oyster, this watch has been discontinued by Orient and is now quite hard to find. Knowing that was part of the reason I bought this watch when I saw it, but like I said in the unboxing, it was also at a price that I couldn't pass up. With so many other Explorer homages on the market now, I can't help but think that if Orient still made this watch, it would be a very good seller for them. This is for a few reasons which we'll get into in this review, but, as always, there are also some things I don't like about the watch. When new, this watch retailed for a price of 37,800 yen, or about 360 US dollars, but that price was regularly reduced. It also came in a variety of colour options, with this black one I have here, as well as white, blue sunburst, blue fume, and even a red fume. As you can see in the pictures, a fume dial has a stronger colour in the centre and darkens towards the edges. All of these colours look great, but that red in particular is very striking and unique. Black and white would be the most versatile both in terms of where you could wear it, and also in terms of the straps you could pair the watch with, making them the most sensible choices. If we move in closer on that dial, we can see how the refined design Rolex created has been translated into this watch. It's a simple design, but well balanced and incredibly legible. The iconic, square-shaped style of the numerals is very reminiscent of the Rolex ones. Where it differs slightly is that Orient has chosen an alternate layout by including a date at 3 o'clock and adding numerals at 12 o'clock where a triangle would usually be on the Rolex. The dial still maintains some symmetry because the date wheel is white and visually balances the 9 o'clock numeral. All other markers are applied, multifaceted rectangles with loom that is not quite centered. This creates a nice effect with the large, flat, polished surface pointing in towards the center of the dial. The Orient logo is also applied and the brand name and automatic printed underneath. Below the pinion above 6 o'clock is that same double diamond and water resist that we saw on my Orient GMT. Around the outside of the dial is a printed minute track, and at 12 there is actually a little triangle. This could be another little nod to the Rolex. The design of the hands also differs from the Mercedes style of the Rolex. For me, this is a relief as I'm not a big fan of those. Orient chose to use polished diamond hands that are faceted down the middle which I really like. They are filled with loom that we'll check out a bit later. The second hand is as simple as it gets, being just a needle second hand with no loom or shaped tip. The size in relation to the dial is also well done, with the hour hand reaching just inside the markers and the minute and seconds hands pushing just outside them. Covering the dial is a dead flat piece of sapphire crystal, which is a little unexpected at this price, but very nice to see. It is however, not the best quality crystal, with no anti-reflective coating to reduce glare, and it seems to pick up fingerprints and smudges much more easily than others. 
Zooming out a little more, let's take a look at the case and sizing of the Orient Chicane. Like I said, it's a very versatile watch, and the size enhances that versatility. At 39mm, it's neither too big nor too small. It's a size you can wear on almost any wrist size comfortably. Surrounding the dial is a polished bezel to play with the light. Lug to lug is a compact 46mm that helps it wear well even on smaller wrists. A standard 20mm lug width means it will be easy to find replacement straps for this watch, and that black dial also helps it work well on a variety of them. Thickness continues to be wearable at just 11.4mm. Finishing on the watch is fairly simple, but keeps with the style of the watch. The top surface is brushed in a circular pattern, but the flat sides of the case are polished. Easy to miss in all that polishing is a chamfered edge that is a nice little detail. Where the day-date homage I had mimics the Oyster case, this watch does not, with a much flatter, more angular side profile that I really like. The lugs taper from both top and side view as they leave the case, creating a shape that sits on wrist nicely. There are no kinds of crown guards to protect the unpolished, unsigned crown that unfortunately does not screw down. If we flip the watch over, we can see the case back of the watch and see that it's a display case back, giving you a look inside the watch to see the movement at work. The movement inside this watch is quite simply finished with a little bit of decoration on the rotor, but nothing else. It is the caliber 48749 made in-house by Orient. It doesn't hack or hand wind and has a daily tolerance of minus 15 seconds to plus 25 seconds per day. It's definitely a budget movement, evident from the finishing alone, but it is appropriate for this watch at the price it was sold at. Moving on to the bracelet, we have what looks like a five-piece link with two polished inner pieces, and if you look from underneath, you can see that it actually is a five-piece link, not what I was expecting from this budget Orient watch. The links are solid and pretty well finished with no rough edges. It is quite similar in style to the Rolex Oyster bracelet, but does a little bit to differentiate itself from the original. Though the bracelet itself is nice, the budget nature of this watch is revealed through the hollow end links and the clasp. The clasp outer is perfectly fine, completely brushed with a chamfered edge and three holes of micro-adjustment. Three is not always enough, but the spacing of these works out to be about the same length as a link, so it should be enough to get a good fit. Opening up the clasp with the two push-button release, we find a pressed scissor mechanism. The good news is that it's easily upgradable with a milled one, like I did on my Orient Ray Diver. Now, Let's get it on wrist and see how it wears. That 39mm case size fits perfectly on my wrist and is incredibly comfortable. I think it's an ideal size for an everyday watch and sits right in the middle in terms of size ranges. That black dial being so simple also means that it pairs really well with other kinds of straps. Here on this leather strap, it dresses it down to a more casual look. If you want to go even more casual, you can put it on a NATO strap like one of these. A black dial like this will work with pretty much any colour you want to use. Looking at the watch in daylight, you might think that those big applied hour markers would have some good loom. Unfortunately, you're in for some disappointment. I'd call it average at best once the lights go out. It does the bare minimum, but I wouldn't be relying on it for after dark legibility. So far, it's pretty clear that I really like this watch, but is it perfect? Of course not. There will always be a small change or two that I would make to a watch, and this one is not immune to that. First, one aspect of the watch we've just talked about, the loom. It is definitely an area that could be improved, and loom is often something that separates budget watches from well-made ones. Like many of my other Orients, the bracelet is another thing that could be improved on the watch. Not so much the bracelet itself, as I think it's quite good, but the end links and the clasp. I don't necessarily have an issue with the movement, 
although of course, a hacking, hand-winding movement would be a nice upgrade. What I have an issue with is the integration of it. If it's not something you can hand-wind, there is no reason not to have the crown screw down. This would give me some more peace of mind, and maybe even help to increase the water resistance. One final thing I'd change on the watch is a much more subjective thing. I would personally prefer if the mid-case of the watch was brushed instead of polished. The size and design of the watch is going for an under-the-radar look, and those shiny polished sides detract from that in my opinion. I also think that having brushed sides would make that polished chamfer on the edge really pop too. Those changes aside, I really do like this watch, and was so glad I came across it. It's always a lot of fun to wear. I find myself drawn to the simplicity when it comes to watches these days, and this one really embodies that. What do you think about this watch? Have you explored the Orient range outside of their main lineup? What are your thoughts on watches taking such heavy inspiration from others? Let me know in the comments, and I'll see you next time.